Hello everybody, here's the captain from trafficpartner.com. We are here today with Joey Gabra, the legend from the United States. And we are both legends in the industry. And tonight we have a little talk together about the past, the future, and what's up. So check out, this is our YouTube channel, The Traffic Captain. And make some noise for Joey Gabra. <laughs> hey Joey, how are you? Good? I'm very good, sir. How are you doing? It's good well, to see you. Not too bad. Uh, I miss my travels, but yeah, now we have more time to talk with each other than yeah. on the shows. On the shows, we're already busy. That's a good point. I actually am communicating more now than I have ever with, with a lot of the people that we would see at the shows. It's kind of interesting. Yeah. <laughs> so the first thing I think people want to know, how you came into this because you look like a musician and how you come to the affiliate marketing business, how you started. Oh, okay. So uh, the short version of this story, I started in maybe early 2000. I started in uh, when, when Google AdWords just, just started. This is very new SEO. All these words that we, we hear, you know, 10 times a day was just brand new. And I was learning, working with a company there. Uh, so I got experience in online advertising and marketing through that. Uh, what happened in 2006, um, some genius came up with an idea to make a phone with an apple on it and uh around june 2006 nobody had mobile experience they only had online marketing experience so they were hiring anybody with with any sort of experience in that world of, of mobile marketing uh and i was one of the lucky ones i got picked up by a small company um that was called uh if it's an old one of the first social adult social networks called uh adult space um, and this was my sort of introduction into the adult industry. Uh, they were creating sort of mobile friendly products and, and the adult side of things. And through that, I was poached by a company that we know now, uh, as Twistbox. Um, oh, yeah. so a few years later, around 2008, uh, Twistbox was a, a very big name in the mobile presence, especially in, in uh, North America. And so I went to, the, to work with them. Uh, you guys know them now as a completely different company than what they were in 2008. Um, and this was my real introduction to answer your question into uh, building offers, monetizing offers, really being an affiliate of our own and allowing other affiliates as well um, to work with us. And this is really how I started to see the business model um, take shape. Uh, and at the time it was in most of the sort of the Western North American markets, which was a very interesting time back then before all the regulations had come. So this was a really cool way to learn how to creatively build products, monetize it without any rules. And um, over the years, click, cash. <laughs> click, click cash. I mean, this is how it was born, right? Uh, and this was probably, I'm sure a very similar experience for you back then. And, what happened was uh, Twistbox at the time, which was different owners and a different organization, uh, was purchased by a company in England. And that company uh, moved me and Lermond and some of the guys you probably know now, um, we all moved to England together. And we worked with a, a larger company that kind of helped grow Twistbox out of, out of their box. And, um, but this is also the same time the regulations were kicking in. So the, 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 the whole business was changing. Um, and some things were getting smaller and worse and some things were getting a little better. Um, and then to where everybody probably watching now, how you guys all know me, uh, is from a company called a fill for you. Uh, when it was time for me to leave Twistbox in England because, uh, my visa was up and my wife was pregnant and I, uh, I couldn't stay there anymore. So uh, at, the, at the time, a fill for you was looking for somebody in North America to represent their company. And it was perfect timing for me. So this was 2011, early 2011. Yeah, that and, was, uh, I started 2010 with SGM and then yeah. I met you directly uh, with Wister and then later a few. Right years. after, yeah. This was, we, we met first in Amsterdam in 2010. <laughs> or, yeah, no, no, sorry. 2011, Amsterdam. 2011, yeah. yeah. Uh, and so that's, yeah, so that was literally two months after I started with the company was when we met. And then, uh, and then you know, the rest is history. I, I, we, we grew, you know, uh, I feel for you into a monster of a company, uh, French-based, but we, we obviously had a large footprint, um, uh, same as what, what you guys were doing. And then, you know, years later, that obviously had to take a big turn because of more 
issues and challenges that the mobile affiliate game was experiencing. Uh, I had always been very close and involved with New Media Services, which is the company I was recently with. Uh, Martin, the owner, uh, and I are very good friends, and we had always had big plans to work together somehow, and this was a good opportunity for me now. Um, I'd been with Worcester for, or, or Phil for you, I've been with them nearly six years. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it was the best six years, but it was just, it was just getting too hard. You know, you know, all those companies were starting to lose their way and, and shut down. So uh, this was a good time. was a big break in the industry. And uh, it's also like traffic partner then took over SGM and we went exactly. more in the dating area. So every company in the affiliate market need to change the, the business model every, every three, four or five years. That's about the right. Of the game, right? Yeah, there's definitely about a, a four or five year cycle with every part of this market, which is really interesting. Uh, from the regulations to the technology, to the business models, to you know all this sort of ways we have to defend ourselves and, and, and still grow. And that was a perfect example. And now the interesting thing from here is simple. You know, when I went to go work with New Media Services uh, and with Martin and this operation, this was an outsourcing company. And what I liked about this is one, for the first reason I was, I was finally taking a break from the affiliate traffic side of things. I needed this break really badly. I needed a creative break. I needed a stress break from that side of the business. And new media services gave me a lot of freedom and uh, a lot of opportunities because we had this whole giant operation in the Philippines of really talented, talented people. And any crazy idea that Martin and I would come up with like that, we could try it every day, a hundred ideas, maybe one idea works. That's all we need. And that's how it worked. We do a hundred ideas a month. One works and we kick ass. How, and how, um, many times, how many times you travel to the Philippines on this times? Almost once a month. Okay. Because every, I left the Philippines also for right. vacation mostly. But yeah. uh, when I saw also the, the new building that we're growing up and I saw you going to the Philippines so quite uh, often and I, like, yeah. I would like to go also to the Philippines. It, for it was great. And, and the nice thing was, you know, it still allowed me to do business with the people that I was getting close to. It's, it was a very important thing for me um, because I established so many nice relationships in our industry. And especially my time with the Phil for you, we, we were working with them. So I was always given the opportunity to bring them to the Philippines and, and visit with us. Um, so, you know, my, my friends from, from everywhere were able to come and visit and spend time with me out there to see the operation. And it was great. And it was really great. So yeah, that was about three years of my time. We grew that company into something really special. Um, and, and I think the same thing happened. This is, this is, a, this is really where, where I am today. Um, was, I know where my, my strengths are. Obviously, I think traffic and my, my connections and my network, just like yourself, um, this is really where my strengths are. And NMS, New Media Services, had grown into a really perfect machine. When we built the office, we grew the team, the ideas were working, everything was working. I, I, I didn't need to be there anymore. Um, and I could feel it. Yeah. You, you canceled yourself out. I canceled myself out. I did such a good job. <laughs> uh, you know, that, but that's, that's, that's true. I, uh, I could tell that you know, I was becoming less necessary and, and for my own interest, I, I, was, I was feeling like I needed to do something else as well. My interest, especially with the way the world is moving with technology and, and traffic and, and everything in my network, uh, I felt like I could do more important things with, with stuff that I like. As a business developer, if you develop everything, then it's time to move on and get dinner. Next. Yeah. So <laughs> that's then tell us a little bit about your new company because I, I was reading some uh, article that they are like in the one, Forbes 100 fast yeah. growing companies. And I never heard before them, uh, before, uh, really from them. I know well, GP, but I didn't hear about the company. So uh, let us know a little bit about the new one. Yeah, the, the operation is, is it's sort of. Um, it's a complicated one, like with most of these companies. There's really one company that owns a lot of smaller okay. branches. Um, what you know me for, for with this company, I'm working with uh, the traffic side is, a, is called Advidro. And Advidro is really a just a, a, a performance network and an ad network kind of mixed together. Um, that's using a lot of really interesting technology. This is what really attracted me to the company. The, the bigger company is 
a lot of things. This is not the, the Forbes 500 company that you, you hear of is actually a different name, more on mainstream and more a tech based company. You wouldn't know them from traffic. Okay. Um, so that's who kind of is the umbrella of everything. Well, most might... important, if you have a performance network, always put the dating products from trafficpartner.com inside, then you make the click, click cash again. <laughs> click, yeah. <laughs> no, and that's absolutely the, the objective, right? That's so it. it put me in a really cool position where I get to now kind of come back into a, a place that, I, that I'm comfortable and that I can have some uh, some interest in what I'm doing. I'm I'm you know I'm a big part of this company. I'm I'm a director. I, I get to have it uh, you know uh, my my say and my investment. And so this makes me obviously a lot more interested. And more than anything, for me, uh, you know, I had been over the years, especially with NMS and, and previous companies, we've been working a lot in machine learning and artificial intelligence. And I learned you know, 99% of the companies that say they have this, they, they really don't. I don't think they really understand what it really is. And this was the company that first finally showed me that they understand it. And I appreciated that a lot. And when I saw how it was really working, that's really what made me interested. I obviously had a lot of different opportunities to work with a lot of interesting people, but these guys really attracted me because- I don't of, like KI because then they don't need you and me anymore. <laughs> it's, it's very, you still need to make sure that you're the boss of the AI. That's the tough part. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. We both always travel many shows. And yeah. of course, right now, because of the coronavirus, there's no shows. But um, if you should say three shows uh, in our industry, which you always uh, visited and loved the most, which three, sh three, sh which three shows you would say? So depending on my goal that year, I would say, you know, I always for, for just your, your traditional sort of traffic deals and, and, and opportunities, not, not necessarily traffic related, always going to be the European summit. I've always had my best experience in terms of business and outside of business. It's uh, you know always a great event. Um, then strictly business, uh, funny enough, probably my best would be Mobile World Congress was one of the biggest and best opportunities for okay. me um, in any company I was working with. It doesn't matter what the goals were. If it was outsourcing with new media or traffic, I found a lot of really interesting opportunities there. Uh, maybe a little less fun, but yeah. you know. Well, so, yeah. I like also very much the Bangkok show because- Oh, and the Bangkok um, show, yeah. That's yeah. a great one. Because there's also a lot of Asian people you normally yeah. don't see in Europe on the U.S. shows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, but of course, um, especially Prague was always one of the best shows in the industry. Easily. From business and fun. Easily, yeah. yeah. I, hope, I hope next year we can do some shows again. Um, hopefully this old pandemic comes to an end. Yeah. So now I want to talk a little bit about you, about private stuff, because like everybody see, you love music, you play guitar. We, we were together on stage in several moments. Many times. Uh, on the mic, you on the guitar, yeah. and uh, <laughs> with the Han, and uh, yeah, with so many Some other of friends. The best memories I really ever had in the last 10 years was the stuff that you and I were doing when we go screw <laughs> yeah. like I remember when we had, um, that was in Los Angeles, the Wiper Room of Fear. Yep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, and I was singing uh, from Rammstein, Du hast, and you played it. That was, it was great, legendary. Great yeah, so good. Yeah. Uh, so um, you made also a YouTube channel. Uh, it's about music. So what is what is your plan behind this YouTube channel? You started there. Yeah, uh, this is an easy one. This is you know much like yourself. I uh, I basically it was you know we stuck at home with this pandemic. You know, so I needed a I needed a COVID hobby, and um, so I have because I. I've been a photographer for about five years, uh, you know, and when I'm, when I'm home, I actually do have a small business. I do take pictures. I do, I do work as a photographer. So I have a lot of camera equipment. I have multiple cameras and I'm very well set up already to, to shoot a video um, with high production value. Yeah. So I set up multiple cameras in this room that you're looking at right now and lights. And that's exactly what I did. I was able to flip a switch and create, a show for musicians mainly. Um, I call it Audio Epidemic on YouTube. And this was because I have all this stuff here. I might as well use it. I can't go play shows, you know, like I used to with my band and all that. And I want to use all my guitars. So this is a channel about 
everything, learning guitar, uh, reviewing guitars, which one's good, which one's bad, my way of learning. Um, some I do some funny sketches uh, and skets. Uh, sorry, yeah, skit. I saw some episode. I really liked it. Yeah, so I try to mix it up for everybody, you know. So there's some things you don't have to be a musician, and it's still fun. But really, it's a, it's mostly you know 99% guitar players from beginners to advanced. They can take a lot away from it, and it's fun. And then uh, some private thing. Um, some years ago, you moved from LA to Texas, right? Yes, yes. So uh, describe it in two, three sentences. What has this change made for you? Well, you for anybody who knows, California and Texas are two different planets basically um and it was really just uh, uh it was a huge change it was because I, i'm an adult with three kids and i need to start thinking about my family first and not me anymore yeah. um as a musician and as a guy who likes to screw around california is the best but texas is where you want to raise a family and you want to make sure that they turn out decent and safe and smart and uh it happens Texas is on my side when I need to take care of my family. So I, that's what we did. And we got a lot more room. We have a big land and everything we could dream of. Cool. And then the last thing, if you had, do you have one dream? Uh, do you have one dream you want to finish in the next five, 10 years, something special in mind? For example, for me is I always want to do a Netflix series about my life. So yeah. uh, do you have something like this, a big dream? Playing yeah, I do. The Wembley Stadion or whatever. <laughs> I do. I have something very, you know, I, if, if, if I can do this right and I retire from the digital media business in five years or 10 years, I would love to tour again. I'm, I'm writing music again. I'm being very creative, which has been a long time. I've never been able to do that since we started having kids. And now I've had the time to do it. And I want to record an album and maybe tour. I don't know about touring, but I want to record again uh, a new album and I want everybody to hear it. Yeah, let's do a tour and have me as a special guest on stage. <laughs> That's more than happy. That's how we do it. That would Perfect. be okay. Okay, thank you, Joey. Um, hopefully see you soon. Yes. And uh, you have the last chance to do some greetings. Do you want to greet somebody out there? Uh, no, just look. Hey, guys, it's, uh, it's good to see everybody. And I, I really can't wait to connect with everyone again. Please check out uh, the company I'm working with now, advedro.com, A-D-V-E-D-R-O.com. Um, and let's see if we can talk business. If not business, then let's go have some fun. Yeah, that's, that's right. It. That's how we do it. Yeah. Uh, this, this was the Captain Interview Lounge today with Joey Gabra, presented by TrafficPartner.com. We rock the world. We make the dating. We make the click, click, cash. And this is Ahoy by the Captain. Thanks, you, Joey. See you soon. Thanks, guys. Bye, Eddie.